Hello guys, welcome to Superior Forging. Uh, this is the uh, map record breaker I've been meaning to show you guys how to uh, forge some of these things that I use. Uh, for instance, uh, this is the record breaker, or I'm uh, sorry, this is the record player and there's like a gold record in here. Um, uh, see, I also did a really mega huge jump, which is like pretty much from the top of the skybox to the bottom. Uh, I think I left myself some wiggle room. Um, it takes more or less 10 seconds to get down there on the mongoose. I think it's, it might be 11, I don't know. I just put the numbers there because I thought it looked cool. Um, and in case you're wondering if you ever see, you'll probably see this in every one of my maps. It's just my little logo, SF, uh, superior forging on top of pedestal or something. Um, so over here is the uh, straight up drop, or uh, sorry, straight up climb. Um, I didn't think this would work as well as it did, but it does, so, as you can see, there's like, I don't know, like 30 or some, 30 or 40 some shields just going straight up. Probably why it wouldn't work, uh, right now it doesn't work with more than two people, and this is probably the main reason right here. Um, but as you can see, uh, if I were to take it apart, um, all you s like so once you know once you steadily climb I think I went up at like maybe a little less than five degrees until I got to the 90 degree angle and um, what you want to do is like for a shield door um, for once for stars for the hill climb you want to have the shields really close to each other because if you like, if you like space them out you either won't you either won't get enough like you know boost from this one to get to this one or um, also it'll, if you have them spaced out um, you'll start turning left and right when you're going up and you might fall off or you'll get stuck into the wall and you fall off your goose and also to prevent that what I did um, was I put you can't oh there it is yeah I put a uh, I think I just put one gravity volume at the uh, like right underneath the uh, block so like um, when you go up it's kind of pushing you off of it so you don't get stuck into the wall and kicked off your goose because that's no fun um, so that's pretty much it for this section the uh, it's really simple it, it's a lot of test trial and error I mean I didn't get this on my first try it took me a little while uh, I want to say that's on a 30 degree. I'm not really sure. It doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe it's. Uh, yeah, it's like 45. I don't know. Uh, so, and of course, this is just a turn. I don't know. You call it a bank wave. I don't really care. Uh, over here, it's like a almost a 45 going up and uh, what I did was put these cannon in. I don't even know I don't know the angle. I just I've just done this so many times on my previous maps. Um, and uh, I just I just get it to work. Uh, I don't really know you, you just have to like trial and error in this one like because if you have it too high you know you you uh I can show you like what happens? Uh, okay, that's a fail. And that. Wow. Okay. Anyway, all right. So, I think I already. I think I just moved it. Uh, oh well. So if you grind up this, it should this should work fine. See how like see how close you are to the edge. It's not like bouncing you up or anything. So you, like you want to have it like that's like the perfect way to have it. Um, if you want, <laughs> you know, if you go too far into it, it'll dig you into the ground. And then um, if you go too high, uh, it bounces you up up a little bit, and that's no good for a race. Like I mean, if you're going for that, you can do it. But like I always go for smooth. So, uh, 
So like, alright, so this one will probably take me into the crown. As you can see, I can go down. Uh, what's the mark? But like, you can you can always see what happens and why it could be a problem. Take it like that. Um. Uh, whoa, that's not supposed to happen. And yeah, so on this part, see, I'm gonna bounce up like really high. You don't want that. You want to have it like down. All right, so I can see when I go over that record player, it breaks underneath. And the way that I did it was a trigger. I use a trigger. Uh, what one? I also use a trade zone. I don't know if this is actually required. I just did it. Um, pretty much the trade zone is set to uh, allow damage, like for the explosives. I don't. I don't know if it's actually required or not. I just have everything like chained super high, so like the explosives actually do something. But I don't know if it's required. Um, I just used it because. I just had issues with these shields breaking and I try to use an explosive volumes or whatever um, invisible volumes and like they, they just wouldn't blow up so I had to use trip mines I pretty much had to use all those trip mines and that's like the only place I could put them I tried to put them like in the middle on the ground like all over the place and it none of these shields would blow up so <laughs> they're, they're like really close to the edge of the rim which is okay I guess to, to make that all blow up. Um, I just use these infection shields. Uh, I think I think if you actually have an object like obstructing the middle of the shields or something, they probably won't blow up at all. So you kind of want to have them hanging out in the open if you're trying to do something with it. And the mines, these are just landmines. Um, I have them, like the settings is like Maybe spawn time three might um, that might be too much. If you have it at like one, um, and it probably doesn't matter. But if you have them like set to infinite, they'll just keep exploding. So um, for the trigger, like I have the mines set up on scripting, and it's on broadcast channel one. You can use whatever broadcast channel you want, but I use channel one, and these none of these options matter. Uh, so I used that and I'm trying to find the trigger that I used because uh, I actually don't remember um, what trigger I used. Where is it at? I don't know. It's, oh, it's right here. Okay. So this is the trigger. Um, as you can see, it's trigger on, enter on, toggle. Okay. So, like, when, whenever you hit like the very beginning of this, I, I have it set like that the explosion will occur and then yeah, I think it's only for the first person in, in, until until everything spawns back um, so like this trade zone right here uh, let's see toggle on, enter, toggle. so uh, pretty much like when you go over it I can I can just walk into it the force ball doesn't take effect but if you walk into it you see it just explodes Everything's gone. The mines will come back, and then I have the uh, shield set to 10, I believe. Because originally, when you spawn it, a shield, an infection shield, is set to 1. <laughs> that that kind of actually got me stuck a little bit. I was like, wondering why these things just keep coming back so fast, and it's because I have it set to 1 second. Um, so you got to be wary of that. Uh, this is the only trade zone, like this is the only scripting zone I used. I'm not really too familiar with scripting yet. It won't, this is like the first time I've ever used it. And I was really happy that you could turn mines on and off because that's like that's pretty awesome that that, that works. Um, and in case any of you are wondering what this explosion was and probably didn't realize it until now, um, it's it's a record. It's like a you know it's like, like a record player old school and then the record player. So like when you look down, you actually have to look down when you race to see the explosion. Um, yeah, I wish I could have did better with that, but I, don't know, I wasn't thinking. Also, um, this jump is a simple jump. 
I just put a shield door there. And then, you know, it bounces you up perfect onto this. Um, over here, I know, probably wondering why there's a soft kill in here when you go up. Well, that that's there because um, sometimes if you hit somebody when you're coming up this ramp, you won't get enough speed and you'll start falling down and then you'll get stuck here. So there's a soft kill that kills you if you get, if you're unlucky like that. Um, the shield door is actually here. It probably doesn't need it, it's per se, but um, so if you know if you mess up on that jump or something, you won't have enough speed to make it. So I had this there as like the safety to make sure you get up there. Um, probably wondering why I didn't put it closer. Well, like I wanted to put it closer so I didn't have to have the soft kill there, but to do that, um, it would have been more of a pain. Like if I had it like up here, you would have like really you would have bounced really high off the jump and I didn't like that you would have got like a really rough landing and so I, I just did it like that I haven't had any issues with it as long as you're not like up against somebody you should be fine um, so let's see here um, pretty much have to be like <laughs> from the back side uh, like right here is probably good and you see like you lose like all your speed and then this boosts you up and you barely make it that. Um, this jump I've never had issues with. I know this I know this part looks severely uneven but you can take it from uh, any side you want and you'll always make the jump as long as you have speed pretty much coming off from where that checkpoint is over there. Um, Alright, uh, that's just a simple drop down, kind of similar to the beginning. Uh, or you drop down for like 10 seconds. Um, it's just a drop. Um, I'm at the very edge of the map over here. Which is pretty... I, I guess that's pretty big. Um, I guess. It's pretty far away. Um, this is just a simple turn I did. I, 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 wanted, I didn't want to end with the teleporter because I think that's cheesy. So um, <laughs> I did it the hard way. And this part was this part took me just as long to do this jump than the very beginning. So, um, uh, unfortunately, I'm at the edge of the map, and I didn't see a way to actually move this over. I mean, I guess I could have, but I didn't. So, if you're driving, you this will slow you down and kind of push you to the left. So, like, just try to like stay in this like middle area, and you should be okay. <laughs> this is like this is like driving into a pit because you drive like so slow over here and over here is like the fast lane so um what I did over here this is the part I don't even want to touch but I already say this map so um it's not required to have a shield door right here for this uh this one is uh, like I just thought it'd be easier to, to just be slow down already you know and not just hit this one shield door where it slows you down because you know like or maybe it's two yeah so like you pretty much either even if you were right here and you're going through this big thing it wouldn't it doesn't really make a difference I just put it there it's, it's easier to hit this like center on if you slow down like a few feet in front of it um, in case you're wondering these are gravity lifts heavies um see I, I think there's 12 i think there's actually 12 stacked over right here uh before i do before i take it apart and ruin it um <laughs> let me show you like how this works uh, all right so you can see this slows you down and this might be very good down. And I might not have spawn point. Okay, that's fine. Um, so to get this to work, which is painful, taking apart my art. Um, Alright, so you got like these cannons. They, you, you, have, you have to play with it if you're doing like, if you're doing a jump like this or something. It all depends on how high you're going, but I believe it's 11 to get that high. Uh, if you have like 
just like one under that, you won't get high enough. If you if you go like 12, or like say you have like 13 of these, you go too high or too hard. So like if I were to stack another one, you'll see what happens. I'll show you in a minute. But um, what I did with this would have been nice to do this on the first jump, but I don't think I would have had enough gravity volumes for it. Um, I put like the length of the gravity volume. Like, see this little blue right here for the uh, cannonman? Um, I pretty much just put the uh, gravity volumes on the outside of the blue. So, like, when you go up, you're bouncing left and right, but you're staying center for the jump to make it, like, onto the ledge. Um, custom game, you won't be able to see that because I have it on invisible or something. Uh, yeah, the invisible gravity volumes. You won't be able to see that. But that's what you're essentially, you're essentially like going up these, this lift and these are just bouncing you to keep you in bounds. Um, the other way to do this, I didn't try it, um, I did this on the older, older track on Halo 4, I think it was like, um, I think it was the fifth sky track I did, um, and you could actually use a trade zone, um, Let's see here, Let's see if I go to trade zones. Uh, it's under gadgets. Got a trade zone right here. Uh, so if I set up Charlie, and then like if you go to options, um, you want to mess with the movement. You would change the player speed to zero. I don't think this matters. Uh, player gravity. Uh, I think it's the two hundred. And then, yeah, that. So like, um, already like I can't move if I'm in there. Like, see, um, let's see here. Yeah. All right. So I, I'm trying to move my left thumbstick and I'm not going anywhere. So you would want to have this, like, the full length of this gravity volume, and this will also keep you from moving left and right in the gravity volume. But, um, you know, I. I think the I just did it the lazy way <laughs> and got the gravity volumes to do it for me. Uh, but this could work too if you had this at zero. It's just like more playing around, and you know you might still have to use the gravity volume or so. I I have to test that out sometime. Um, that takes too long. So so uh, uh, all right. Let's see how many I use. I'm pretty sure I use. 11, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, maybe that was 13. I think that was 13, actually. Alright, so, um, let's see, 1, 2, 3, uh, so it's a pain. Uh, okay, I don't, it's invisible. How about that? It's invisible. I've never had that happen before. <laughs> Four. Uh, this is such a pain. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, let's try 12. Um, I don't remember. I think it was 13, but if we try 12, I don't know. Let's we'll see what happens. Um, let's see, if that works. Yeah, there we go. That might have been 12, actually. Alright, so that was 12. Um, you'll notice also, if it just works once, like, you know, that, that's never good enough. With, with tracks like these, you gotta. You gotta like test it, like you know, at least nine out of ten times to see if it works. Cause you know, you do it once, it works, and then you try to do it again, and it doesn't work. Or, or you try to, you know, you you make another part of the track, and for some reason it doesn't work anymore. This is what happens, and it's really frustrating. But I've done this a lot, so I just don't give up. You know. Um, it's unfortunate. 
This is definitely like it's definitely more consistent in Halo 4 forwards when you do this type of stuff. Um, so this is 13, I think. Um, but you see, I hit I hit the shield harder that time, but I mean I hit I put it put a shield there per se. So um, I don't know like I think if you were to stack like more, um, you might just go through the shield. Of course, I did put the shield up there to stop you from hitting the ceiling, you know, to get the better landing. Uh, so I just, I just make it like a ridiculous amount. Uh, oh, Mongies, they just keep not spawning by, so let me just fix this real quick. Uh, where is it? I'm losing my mind, it's under X, I knew that. Uh here we go. Let's see. Huh. You know when I was in forest this actually did make a difference, uh, when I was doing it. Um so maybe it was just these um uh, this is something you would have to play around with. That I don't um I definitely didn't get this on my first try. This took me a long time to just, you know, to figure out how to do it. As a matter of fact, when I was forging this track, everything is so like spaced out. I didn't just line it up like from the eye. I actually took a uh, like those numbers are in a pretty pretty solid line because I used like rail trims all the way from here. Like here, I'll show you. Like. Uh, yeah, I use like these trim larges at uh, 90 and 45, 30 degree or whatever to get to the bottom. So I pretty much just went like from the center of this, um, and I just like followed it, and it helped if magnets were on. <laughs> um, and I just follow it all the way down to the bottom, or like, and you know like, uh, I actually had it above the track so I could make the jump. And then like when I thought it was a second or something, I would start with number one and then two and so forth to get the numbers correct. I, they're probably not like a real countdown, but it's close enough, I guess. Um, I mean, I went in the fours and the, the, it only took like 10 or 11 seconds to hit the bottom. Uh, so like you wanna like line everything up I hit these numbers so many times on the way down when I was doing this that like each number has been moved so many times. Um, this probably won't work because I messed it so. yeah, up. to the wall. Um, let's see here. I think that's pretty much it. Um, it's not. I don't know, this map's just really big. Um, Oh yeah, how I was measuring the map. I think it's like this map from top to bottom is like 14 of these blocks standing straight up and down, or maybe it's higher than that. Well, that's what I did in the beginning, like to get the first jump, because I wanted to see where my barriers were. Because when you make a racetrack, well, I make a racetrack. I don't like to use teleporters, and so I want to make sure I have enough room to get back back to the start of the track because if you're like against the wall right here that means you're gonna have to like go out of your way to try to get back up here or you know back to the start if you're like against the wall or something teleporters is definitely the easier way to do it but I don't really like using teleporters unless I have to and there's no other option but you have a lot of options in Halo 2 Anniversary just to get out of that especially since you have like 64 cannonmen you can use. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't have 12 cannonmen, I wouldn't have got up there <laughs> like that. Because uh, I used like six on Skytrax fifth to get up there or something, or probably f five or six. I don't know. It's been a long time. Um, so that's what I used. This is like uh, this is the Ford's breakdown of Record Breaker. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. 
uh, uh, I hope you also enjoy this track. I I really enjoyed it. Um, making it wasn't as enjoyable as racing it, but it's really cool. Do new stuff. But like I've never seen anyone do a straight up drop or a straight up climb before. I mean, I tried to do one in Skytrax fourth, I think, and it didn't work out too well. It worked like maybe one or two times, uh, but because uh, I was using Cannonman, I didn't have the consistency of the shield doors in that quantity. So, uh, anyways, uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.